Hi there! I'm back out again with the dogs. Today contemplating decluttering a bit of my life. I am, I'm a, I wouldn't say I'm quite a hoarder, but I definitely have a lot of stuff. And I think I've always collected stuff as a way of, I don't know, buying stuff to make me feel good. I have ADHD, as you know, if you follow this channel at all. Um, and that means that I am a bit prone to impulsive buying. And that, in return, has meant I've got a house full of stuff that most of which, quite frankly, I don't need. If I open my makeup drawer, I've got tons and tons of makeup and I don't even really want to be wearing that much makeup anymore. So I think lately I've realised that it might be time to have a bit of a declutter. Declutter, not just, not just the stuff, not just the, the belongings, but also just decluttering some of the detritus of life. Is that, is that a fair way of putting it? You know, we collect things along the way, don't we, throughout our lives. People, things, beliefs. And yeah, I think maybe it's time for me to have a declutter. So in this video, as I'm out with the boys and girls again, I thought I'd just spend my walking time sharing why and how I'm planning to try and declutter. Hopefully it might give you a few ideas yourself or <laughs> more useful to me is if you've already done this, share your ideas with me because I'm really, I'm really not good at throwing stuff away or getting rid of stuff. So if you've got any top tips on how I can do this, they would be very much appreciated. Drop them in the comments. And uh, yeah, let's share what works. So one of the things I'm really hoping to get from decluttering is just a bit more of a sense of calm. I think from what I've heard and what I've read and from other creators on YouTube who've done this, decluttering can really help calm the mind. I'm not a tidy person at all and I've always told myself that I work better when things are in a little bit of a mess. It's my mess. I know how everything works. I know where everything is and quite honestly that's a fib. <laughs> Most of the time I'm hunting around for stuff getting stressed because I can't find it and I really love when I do tidy things away um, I have to be a little bit careful because if I tidy stuff away that I need, I'll forget I need it. So I'm out of sight, out of mind. But I do feel more productive and calmer when, my, especially my workspace, when my workspace is tidy. And I love it when I've just finished tidying the bedroom and everything's in its place and there's no clutter anywhere. So that's the first thing I think. I'm wanting to try and get some calm back in my life and then the other thing that people say is that if your bed area your bed you know bedroom area is clear of clutter you're likely to sleep better and sleep isn't something that I'm particularly brilliant at so anything that might be able to help is hopefully going to be be good the second thing is I kind of want a bit more time for the things that matter because when there's a lot of clutter, you, I, well, I do anyway, I was going to say you spend, but I don't know you at all. So I'm hoping that with less stuff to get in the way, I might actually save a bit of time and also save a bit of money because one of the areas of my life that I'm trying to declutter is my working life. That means winding my business down, taking on less work, having a bit more time, for leisure activities and I won't have as much money coming in that's the truth of it so part of this is you know if I'm not making as much money I won't have as much money to be spending on stuff 
So I need to get used to managing on less. Another thing I'm kind of hoping to get from this decluttering is just a bit more clarity around what I want the rest of my life to look like, what my goals are going to be for the next year, five years, ten years, because my life is changing. As we head into retirement, life isn't going to be the same. And at the minute, I feel like I've got so much clutter in my head, a lot of clutter in our house. Um, it's hard to know how to set my goals for the future when there's so many distractions and so much other stuff to get in the way. So that's what I'm hoping. So how am I going to do it? <laughs> and this is um, perspective, I guess. I suppose I have started doing some of it, but it's more, this is kind of what I'm going to try and do as opposed to this is what I am doing. So I know that I am prone to getting overwhelmed quite easily. So my plan is to start really, really small. We are buying a camper van as part of the, part of the future plans. And actually that's been really useful because my, my initial impulse was to jump onto Amazon and buy loads of stuff for us getting started with the van. And actually I've spent this morning going around the house, finding things we've got two of. We have lots of duplicates, if not triplicates of things. I've been up in our loft. <laughs> our loft is like an Aladdin's cave after sort of 30 years of marriage. So I've, I've been up and found lots of things to get us started with the van. And that in itself has been really useful for helping me to declutter part of the house so I suppose you could argue I'm not really decluttering I'm just moving it from one place to another but my normal response my normal reaction would have been to just go out and buy stuff without really thinking about what have I already got so I'd have ended up with a whole load of other stuff and still have all the clutter in the house so actually I feel quite <laughs> bizarrely proud of myself this morning for not to, just diving in and buying stuff. Another tip I've heard is the one in one out rule and I'm really trying to do this with clothes and shoes. I definitely am trying not to buy as many clothes as I usually do. Um, I don't buy expensive clothes. I've been a bit of a charity shop lover for quite a lot of years but the problem with that is I really love having a mooch around the charity shops but it does and because they're cheap you know it's not expensive to buy good quality second-hand stuff it does mean I buy quite a lot of it so I'm going to try the one in one out rule even if it's charity shop stuff in fact if it's charity shop that should make it easier because I can just return you know, my one out back to the charity shop. And I love the idea of shop, uh, shopping in charity shops because for me, it's all about recycling, reusing, sustainability. And I just need to be a bit more proactive about one in, one out and being a bit ruthless. Another thing I heard was to look through your things so I'm sort of talking clothing here, but I suppose it would apply to lots of things. And if you've not, if you've not worn it or used it in the last 12 months, get rid. Because that's taken us through all of the different seasons. And if we've not worn it in ev throughout every season, then chances are I won't use it. And I can feel the little voice in my head saying, ah, but you're losing weight and some of those clothes you'll wear again. The truth is I won't because my tastes will have changed. I do get bored with clothes quite quickly, hence the charity shop shopping. So I more than likely won't wear those clothes, even if I fit into them. So one in, one out is the plan. And that sort of leads on to the next level, which is going through my 
things, my stuff, and being really ruthlessly honest about whether or not I use it, whether I'm keeping it as a, oh, well, it might come in handy one day, because the chances are it won't. And, you know, this is a difficult one though, because a lot of the stuff that I found for the camper van has been in our loft for a few years. And I have got a use for it now without having to go and buy it again. That said, <laughs> if I'd got rid of it all those years ago, I'd have probably forgotten I even had it anyway. So, you know, maybe this is where I have to, yeah, get ruthless and be honest with myself and say, have I used it? Do I need it? Is it a need or a want? And if it's just a want, I'm, you know, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about going fully minimalist. I'm not going to strip the house bare. But we've got things like, we've got a tagine in the, in the cupboard, a Moroccan casserole dish with a high dome top. And it's beautiful. We paid quite a bit of money for it. I think I've used it about five times and it's been there about 10 years. So it's taken up space in the cupboard that could be free for, <laughs> I guess, for other things. No, don't go down that route. You're not going to fill the space with other things. But yeah, there's lots of things that I've got that I could get rid of. I just have to be honest and ask the question, do I really need it? And if the answer is no, get it out. I've got stuff in folders, you know, paperwork and things in folders that I really don't need. I am pretty much digital these days, but I seem to be hanging on to lots and lots of old bits of paperwork. I've got uh, my notes from when I did my degree 11 years ago. Do I really need them? Am I ever going to go back and read them? Am I keeping them just for sentimentality? I think that's something I need to think about as well. Just getting rid of anything that is just there for the sake of keeping it because, it, you know, for nostalgia. But, you know, my grandkids probably aren't going to read my university notes. So I'm not going to get rid of stuff that I think they might want to keep. But what I don't want to do either is create in my granddaughter the idea that she needs loads of stuff. She's got ADHD as well, so she's going to have the sim similar problems. So as she's only nine, maybe this is a good time to kind of help her to change her belief systems around keeping stuff. And the last thing that I'm thinking of is to go for quality over quantity. I have a tendency to look for bargains so I will buy cheap, well not cheap, but I will, you know, if there's, for example, if there's, oh, let me have a think, two tripods, <laughs> for example, I'm thinking about YouTube, and one is 160 pounds and one is 60 pounds, my thought process is, oh, I can't really justify spending 160 pounds on a tripod. I'll get the 60 pound one. And then in a few months after I've had it, I realize it's limitations. And then I have to go and buy the expensive one anyway. And then I've got two, hence the clutter. But also, I keep repeating the same pattern. So I really want to focus on thinking about quantity, uh, sorry, not quantity over quality, that would be completely wrong, wouldn't it? The other way around, quality over quantity. See if that helps me to minimize the amount of stuff I'm buying, because I'll buy better quality and I won't need to buy as often. What is this they say? Um, buy once, buy right. I don't know if that's a saying or if I've just made that one up, but there you go. Buy once, buy right. <laughs> that's about things, but I'm also trying to declutter my life as well. So um, I think a lot of this is about trying to simplify my day. That's going to get a lot easier now that I'm winding the business down and the business is closing because there won't be anywhere near as much to do. The danger there is I might get bored and if I get bored I will fill my days with meaningless stuff. But that's partly why I want to really focus on what our goals are for the 
you know, as, as a couple for Mark and I, so that I know that the time that I'm spending is focused on something useful because there is always a tendency that I might end up just filling my time with nothingness. Other areas that I want to try and declutter is my social media. I'm, I'm kind of doing this already. I spend much, much less time on social media than I did a couple of months ago, partly because my business was very reliant on social media, particularly LinkedIn. And because I've not been doing so much to promote my business, I've not needed to be on social media as much. But it is quite hard. But I've done things like taken TikTok off my phone because that was a real time suck. I do spend a lot of time on YouTube. Maybe that's something I need to look at in a bit more detail how much time I'm spending consuming content because I still want to be making content. This is something that I love doing. Um, so yes, social media, definitely want to reduce the amount of time I spend on social media because I think again, that will simplify what's going on in my head. I have a tendency to look at social media and then you get sucked into adverts for things, you know, the old, ooh, comparisonitis kicks in. So that's definitely something I'm gonna try and limit as well. I guess the big thing here is decluttering for the future. We don't need anywhere near as much stuff as we've got. It's gonna be hard trying to get my husband to declutter because he is a bit of a hoarder, but he doesn't, he doesn't hoard in the same way as I do. I kind of, buy stuff he tends to find stuff or he'll fix something and there'll be something left over and he'll put it in the garage and he always seems to manage to find a use for it i think that's the engineer in him can't find my uh oh there it is couldn't find the gate out of the field just to wrap up then really i'm not going to um be too hard on myself i'm going to take it a bit at a time and have a bit of grace with myself. Let's face it, it's taken 59 years nearly to gather all of this junk. It can't go overnight. But I'll let you know how I get on because I think I'm going to feel better for it. Let me know in the comments if you've had a big life declutter. How did you go about it? What, what were the benefits? Did you find that there were huge benefits? Did you not notice any difference? Let me know in the comments. I'm really, really interested. If you've enjoyed this, please do give me a like and hit the subscribe button. Why not? It's free. And uh, you can come out on another walk with me, maybe. Talk to you soon. Bye.